So a journey started on this road right here. This is Kelly Road in Kinston, North Carolina. And there was a journey that started right here with that changed the whole course of my life. And I'll tell you about it. First, let me tell you that my, my wife now, my wife that I married, um, did not like me. I really, really liked her. She didn't like me at all. She thought that I was wild and, and uh, could not be tamed and she was not gonna, gonna uh, have anything to do with me. But that soon changed over an event that I'm gonna tell you about right here. So I was down here. She lived actually in this neighborhood right down here. I'll show you the house. Her name was Lori Vanderford. And that was her house right there, the one that's painted. I almost missed it because they changed the color of it. And I was right down here in this neighborhood with a friend of mine named Russell Naylor. Russell has passed away. But Russell lived right back here. Very nice fella. And he, was, he liked to ride motorcycles. So I had bought a motorcycle and Russell bought a motorcycle. This was his mom and dad's home. He lived here. His mom has a beauty shop right there in that, that little outbuilding. I don't know if they still live here or not. But I was with Russell and I had been in Branchwood, like I was talking about earlier, if you heard that part of my story, riding wheelies up and down the road. And I had not got my tags for my motorcycle, my insurance. I didn't have my motorcycle license yet. I hadn't tagged it. I hadn't done anything. And But I was out practicing and my stepmother was supposed to pick me up and take me to get my um my motorcycle license we were going to load the motorcycle on a trailer take it down at that time you had to ride the course and stuff and i'm assuming that you still do but she was going to take me down there to do all that kind of stuff and she called and said that she wasn't going to be able to make it that day so i just said okay well i'm gonna go back out and ride again so i was out with the motorcycle riding i was over here at russell's house but i had run up and down kelly road uh, a bunch of times running real fast and that kind of stuff. So I think somebody called the highway patrol. So we were over here and we were heading back to a friend of mine that lives on Kelly Road, Bill Stovall's house. And uh, evidently somebody had called the highway patrol and he was sitting down here waiting. And I'll show you where he was. So I left Russell's house right here. I turned left on this is Fallen Creek Road. And I'll try to point Lori's house out better this time. They've actually painted it white, painted the brick white. And ironically, Mike Smith, my friend that passed away, his sister bought that house. But that's the house right there. Or I say, I say white is gray. But she, she lived in that house. And we came right down here. and was getting ready to turn a left here on Kelly Road and the highway patrolman was sitting right here where the stop sign is. He was actually sitting hidden right there, right there. There was an oil tanker coming. So the oil tanker turned in first. I staggered with uh, Russell so he couldn't see I didn't have a tag and <clears throat> I got scared, went around the oil truck and just hammered it to the floor as hard as it would go. And then I look in my rearview mirror and there he comes. I should have stopped, but I didn't. Because people were telling me, man, if you get stopped, you're gonna go to jail, which is not true at all. Um, I'd have got tickets, but I wouldn't have gone to jail. In Bill's house, his mom and dad still live there to my knowledge is that house right there. And I'm still friends with Bill. So I come down here and I've got the motorcycle as fast as it'll go. It was a, a, a Suzuki GS425 and the guy I bought it from drag raced it. So it was set for zero to speed, fast speed, not slow speed. And what I mean by that is, is it was set up for not top end speed, not getting away, it's set up for drag racing. So when I got down here, I slammed on brakes and realized that the bike started wobbling. And I realized that uh, 
it was wobbling a lot and I was going to lose control of it. So I laid it on the side about here and it slid through this intersection off and that, that house was not there and that concrete wasn't there and it slid off the side of that and the wheels hit and it stood up point, pointing this way. So I took off down this way. Highway patrolman right behind me the whole time and I've got it as fast as it'll go. In fact, I floated the valves in it and what that means is the motor's turning so fast that the valves never close and it'll lose compression for a moment and slow down until it catches back up and then it'll, it'll go again. But I was going so fast that I was literally floating the valves in the, in the bike and I could not get away from it. And I kept on going and kept on going And I passed my soon-to-be wife somewhere right about here. Not having any idea that she was going to be my future wife. So I went around, started around this corner, and at that time, this would have been in 1983. No, 80, yeah, 83, 84, somewhere along in there the North Carolina Highway Patrolman had started using Mustang GTs. And the Highway Patrolman's still behind me. He's in a brand new Crown Victoria. I come around this curve, and I'm slowing to make these curves because I'm not a, uh, a high-speed motorcycle rider. And right here, one of those Mustangs is waiting. So when I saw that Mustang, I thought there's no way I can outrun him which I wasn't doing so good at outrun the Crown Big. But I thought, I'm going to slam on brakes and turn around and go the other way, accelerate real fast, and then get off the road and try to get out into the woods somewhere. And so I slammed on brakes, tried to go around him, and when I did, I went around, he did a, what they call a running roadblock, where he turns the car sideways in front of me like this and his car sliding sideways, I straightened up and went around just like that. And when I did, I'll never forget, he was right beside me and I look over at him and he looks at me and he turns the steering wheel. He just looks out the window and takes the steering wheel and does that. And that left front fender hit my right leg and broke right here and broke both bones, compound fracture, tibia and fibula. And when that happened, I went off the side of the road into this ditch and laid out, it was a little bit further down here. The ditch wasn't quite as deep. It was a little spot right down here. But I ended up laying in the ditch right here, out in this field. He handcuffed me and I was trying to hold my leg to keep it from wiggling because it was wobbling like crazy because of the muscle tension. And I'll never forget, he looked at me and said, I guess you're not going to run anywhere. So then he pulled the, the uh, handcuffs off of me and the ambulance came. And my soon-to-be father-in-law actually saw the ambulance here and all that kind of stuff and told my future wife to go see me in the hospital. And she did, and we've been together ever since. And that was 35 years ago, friends. Close, close to 35 years ago. Let's see, I was... Um, yeah, yeah, that's real close to 35 years ago. So there you have it. That's what happened right here in this field. So it's funny how a mistake like that can change your life forever. I love my wife and she's been a fantastic wife and we've been together in February, be 30 years married. So there you have it, friends. That is the story of what happened right out here. This is LaGrange, North Carolina. Paul's Path Road, State Road 1001. So this is the same road Paul's Path, State Road 1001. After we got married, we moved right here to Pecan Grove. We got a brand new single wide mobile home and we put it in this lot right here. Our new home was right here. 
And you see that pole right there? That pole <laughs> is still here. And that is funny. I bet you on that pole, you'll be able to see dings. I used to shoot at this pole with my pellet gun from my porch. So the trailer porch would have been, there's eggs out here. The trailer porch would have been probably right about here. And this is where we live when my son Trey was born. And I would shoot off the porch. I'd hold the, the gun with one hand and shoot this pole. And you can see there's all these little dings in it. That's what all those dings are where I would shoot that pole with pellets, with the pellet gun. And friends, that was almost 30 years ago. But none of these trees were here at that time. All that stuff has grown up since. So this store down here, friends, is at Hardison Crossroads. And there used to be a guy that lived in this house right here named Marvin Hardison. He lived right there. And I can tell that Marvin doesn't live there anymore because there's no cars in the yard. At that time, that's Hardison, that was uh, um, Hardison's Grocery. And my dad lived right down here. I'm gonna tell you a story about Marvin Hardison in a moment, but my dad lived down here and he had an ultralight. And he would land on this road and go to that store and get fuel for the ultralight. And people thought he was crazy, which he, he was pretty crazy. Or he is still pretty crazy. And naturally there's somebody about to run me over. But my dad lived right here where this house is at, right there. So I'm going to turn off and see if I can get this person away from me. My God, we're out in the country and you can't get away from people. And I mean in the country. So right here, friends, is the second and third largest private residences in the state of North Carolina. There's one of them right there. And the other one's hidden back here in the woods. And these were brothers. Robert Hill Construction was the dad. And these brothers built those two houses the robert the robert hill brothers and um they've recently sold this house and it's sold for like less than a million dollars which is insane i'm gonna see about flying the glory over it real quick but it's it's raining quite a bit so maybe maybe we'll we'll wait till later frustrating this rain so friends, this is an area, you can see the roads closed back there. You can see all the trees down. When the hurricane came, it washed this part of the road out. This little creek ran under it, but you can imagine what that creek looked like. And you can see what happened to the road gone 2016 remnants of the latest hurricane friends north carolina this is falling creek road kinston north carolina 2016 Going around the curve, Charlie Grant store will be right here on the right. And then you'll see the overpass. <laughs> Never crossed my mind that that would be here out in the middle. Man, when I say we're in the country, we are in the country, friends. R.L. Smith. When I was 20 years old, this gas station right here, it wasn't a kangaroo at the time. In fact, they may have torn it down and built another building that looks different. 
was where um, the lady refused. The, the law hadn't changed to 21 yet. It was still 18, and she refused to sell beer to me. Me and my friend Bill Stovall, we were in there to buy USA beer. It was cheap, and she wouldn't sell beer to us because she said that the law was 21. I said, no, it hadn't changed yet. And we actually had to call a sheriff's deputy and get him to come up there and tell the lady that the law hadn't changed yet so she'd sell us beer right there at that store, friends. And there used to be a skating ring right here. It burned down. Before it burned down, though, it had it, no, it was no longer the skating ring, and they used it for um, a uh, music venue. I saw Chubby Checker right there, friends. And also saw... Um, uh, the guy that sang, um, on it. When a man loves a woman. What's his name? Percy Sledge. Saw Percy Sledge right there. He can't keep his mind on nothing else. North Carolina Highway Patrol, friends. They mean business. So my granddaddy was a Civil War buff, and he told me that in these woods behind this church is, was a Civil War camp. So one of these days, I'm going to have to go in there and search it out, friends, and see if I can find it back up in them woods right there. Them woods. That was Duval Barwick's house right there. He was a customer of mine at the Ford Place. This is Chubby Nubby's. Chubby and Nubby were both customers at the Ford place. That's real. There's Wynn Odom Ford, friends. I worked there for a good part of my adult life. When I left and moved to Nashville, I had worked there almost half my life. Mr. Abbott lived right there. He took me to a uh, church trip to the wilds. My Aunt Frank lived in one of these houses. Did she? Yes, I do. It was brick. Some will say it was either that one. There's a lot of trees down and roof stuff. Now, or it was. Now, that guy was the uh, body shop guy. Maybe. Maybe that was Aunt Frank. This house right here, the one that you're seeing right there, friends, that guy, his name was Barney. And no, I'm telling you wrong. That's not the house. Because that was the body shop guy. Barney's house was that house right there. And Barney was a car salesman at the Ford Place. And uh, he had been with us for several years, which is right down the street. And Barney, a guy called me from Kinston one day at a gas station and said, Hey, uh, we've got uh, one of your uh, salesman's demo cars up here and you need to come get it. And I said, Well, what do you mean you got it? He said, Yeah, Barney stopped in. I can't think of Barney's last name. You remember? He stopped in and told me to wait about a week and then call you. And Barney had jumped on a Trailways bus and gone to Alaska and was working on a, a fishing boat in Alaska. Had left his wife and his two kids right there in that house, just took off, went to Alaska. That actually happened. That's a true story. LaGrange, North Carolina, friends. Never. Oh, I bet. J.C. Britton's garage. And Thurston Letchworth's place is right up here. It looks like they've cleaned it up. I would assume that Thurston has probably passed away. That was Thurston's Let Letchworth's place right there, this building right here. And you can see there's still, it's still called Letchworth Body Shop, but I don't know, they haven't really cleaned it up, have they? This is where I take her shopping. And LaGrange Manufacturing used to be right there. That building is gone. And I'll tell you a little fun fact up here, friends. This is the little town that I met somebody very famous. Um, or I consider them very famous. You may, may or may not. I came to this intersection right up here. No, there's, there's LaGrange Manufacturing. The building's still there. I'd have been shocked if it was gone. I came to this intersection right here and stopped at this stoplight. And I looked over in the parking lot of this gas station right here and right about there was a phone booth. And in that phone booth was Tiny Tim tiptoe through the, 
tiptoe through the tulips, Tiny Tim, talking on the telephone. And I talked to him all the way across this parking lot. He crossed to this side of the street and I followed him down this street talking to him and got his autograph. And my granddaddy was a huge fan of uh, Tiny Tim and he collected records. He was a big record collector, my granddaddy was. So I, my granddaddy wanted me to ask him what kind of records he wanted. So he said Henry Burr records. So my granddaddy went in his collection and pulled out some Henry Burr records went that night to see him. Tiny Tim was traveling with the circus and playing with the circus. He went to see him here in LaGrange, North Carolina, gave him some Henry Burr records, and he recorded him on cassette singing Tiptoe Through the Tulips and dedicated it to my granddad. I opened a little car stereo store, and that was the building right there. That was Stalin Stereo. That little building was right there, friends on Main Street, LaGrange, North Kakalaki. I think this was the house of the mother of the boy that killed his stepmama and his daddy. So his mom lived there. His real That's mother. not where he killed him at. No. Okay. No. Because they lived in a house back in the that was um it was a, a two story house with a barn in the back, I remember that. Yeah. I think this well, this was either his real what mother was his or name? his sister. I don't know. I can't remember his name either. Ask Mama. She's in there. Scott's got to be gone. And they, I, don't, I don't know why. I don't think that they get it anymore. I don't remember that thing there being there. What? That ramp. That bill got ramp for my daddy. Really? Mm -hmm. Hi, Daddy. Where's your truck? Where? Gangling's got it. Who's there? <laughs> Scott. Scott. Go get a part for you. They're working on her truck so she'll have something to try to work tomorrow. Well, you look good. Huh? You look good. Thank you. You look really skinny. She's been skinny. You ain't seen her in a while. I ain't skinny. I think you are skinny. <laughs> She's been skinny, okay? For years. <clears throat> oh. No, it was, he said it was raining. One time he said it was sleeting. Who said it was sleeting? Didn't you? No. Somebody put on Facebook that it was sleeting in LaGrange. I hadn't seen no sleep, but I've seen little... It ain't cold enough to sleep, I don't right. think. You need a little tree skirt. Huh? You need a little tree skirt. It's cute. It's not as big as you normally have. It's not one I had last year, but I wish I'd have put it back up. I'm going to get the way. Oh, it's my new car. Drive it down the corner. Oh, Betty. Yeah, Mom, you've been. Yeah, you've been it. <laughs> All right, ask her, Laura. Okay. What was the name of the boy that killed his daddy um, and went off for the weekend on the motorcycle and his stepmother? Who? What was his name? Was it um, Michael Sutton? That's, That's him. Okay. <laughs> so that garage is torn down. There used to be a garage here. That's, I think it's been gone a long time. It, it is back closer to my house. It is still back yeah. there? Uh -huh. Okay, so I must have I passed it before I started looking. Dog. Well, the guy died in there. Remember, it was uh, that boy that worked for me. I can't remember his name. He was a transmission guy, and that was his dad's garage, and he died of carbon dioxide poison. With his girlfriend. Inside there, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to bend it all up. Yeah, you need to put it somewhere flat because it's bent. Well, I don't know where to put it flat. Well, lady, I'll put it back here behind that cord. And this was Carol Layden's um, trailer park up here on the right, but it's completely yeah, come they apart. Tore, they tore it down. Look at that thing. Yeah, they tore it down. Trees fell See, it through. Right back there. Yeah, it's completely grown up. It's over. The house still there? It's right across from the um, Easton's Grill. Is it? Ken's Grill. Uh -huh. Down that road across the road from it. Down hmm. the road. Okay. Yeah. So we need to go down there. Remind me of that. Yeah. Where does Sutton Boy Because I got a friend that lives on the uh, Carolyn. Well, did on someone East. move back in the house after the man got killed? Yeah. Yeah. Sure they did. 
Yeah, he, um, had like he hadn't done nothing. I still don't think he killed his wife and he killed, killed his stepmom. That's all. Uh, Eddie's place right yes. there. Killed his stepmom and his daddy. And what was his name? Bob Sutton? Yeah. Bob. Daddy loved him to death. Yeah, talked about him when he was weak. Granddaddy was not doing well. He was sick. And we grandma. There's that highway patrolman again. Got yeah. him somebody else. So we would go to town that day and grocery shop and we came back that day and somebody sat with granddaddy. But we can't, I can't remember who it was. But grandma said, well, Robert, what did you do today? And he said, Bob Sutton came to see me. Spent all afternoon with Bob Sutton. And grandma said, Robert, I don't think so. He said, well, I know he did. <laughs> and, and somebody was there and he said, tell him, <laughs> tell him he was here. But he could have had his little car. Biggest day. Biggest day in his mind, he thought he came to see him, but he worried him. So he stayed on his mind all the mm -hmm. time because it bothered him. That he well, that boy got out of jail yeah. and was a customer of mine at Ford Place. Had a little yeah. Ranger pickup truck. And got married. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember who he married. And she visited him in jail, didn't she? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that. Yeah. I don't know who she was. Um, but he's her problem now. Lori, you seen Phyllis? No, I haven't even heard from her. I don't know what to tell her. I want to text her and see her, but I had this shower today. So maybe I can text her when we get back from the shower. Uh -huh. and maybe she'll come out here. Or maybe we can ride and see her. But I didn't know how to text her and say, hey, I'm going to be here, but I'm going to a shower today. And then there's tomorrow. There's with, no easy way to do that. So there was no easy way to do it. So I said, I'm not going to say anything till I get back from the shower. Then we'll figure it out. That telephone pole must have broke off in the storm. And which... I wanted you to tell Billy which brick house St. Frank lived in. Too late now. So I think the pole was about $130 a month. Yeah. So Floyd gambled it away. <laughs> but how can you gamble a house away you're making Did payments you on? Did you hear what he said? $130 a month. It was $130 a month. 139 I believe. Was her house paid? Yeah, but you can't gamble a house that's not he paid for. He lost it, honey. He, he, he put something up against it and he lost it. And buddy, she, whew, she won't never have it. She know it. Would you be? No. <laughs> this is Little Baltimore, friends. Little Baltimore. And it's the 25th, 25th anniversary of something. I just don't know what. So one of these houses, friends, family member gambled away. Carry it now. Going too fast. Okay, it's that one. That one, I believe. That one with the blue shutters, I think. Yeah, it's got a big building in the back. Yeah. Yes. That's it. That's that was it. it. So was the right. blue shuttered house got gambled away, friends. He <laughs> lost it in a poker game. Billy, ain't Frank gonna be mad at you? <laughs> well, we ain't got to tell Aunt Frank. She, it ain't like she doesn't already know. <laughs> we wouldn't have known it was Aunt Frank if you hadn't have said it. <gasps> yeah, hmm. you're going to a shower today. <laughs> So Wynola lives up here. I wonder if he's in town. Wynola Ford, Win Odom. It's got him a Thunderbird back there. That's Wynn's house. Mom, you don't have change for a hundred, do you? Oh Lord not. What's up? We used to go to a spaghetti supper right here, fundraiser every year. It looks completely different now. Look at it, Laura. Mm -hmm. Did they add on to it or change it? We go in that they gymnasium right there. Scatty dinner. Some people call it buscetti. Busketty. Give her 35. Glory. What? I've licked the envelope now. I know. I saw you. It's fine, Lori. Fairview Cemetery, L.A. Grange, North Kakalaki. 
Should I put Kara and Justin on it? I didn't. No, she she got the baby by herself. There's Thurston, Thurston Lynch. Worth right there. Where John's is now, don't you? No. <laughs> Were you going to tell us? Buddy. Okay, hold a minute, buddy. He's back this way. Well, somebody could have said but something. I know where he is. Well, nobody's That's bothering okay. to say anything. He's down this row, isn't he, Mom? Uh, wait a minute. Wait. This one right here. Go down here. And let me let you pick out Johnny. Because there's Letchworth right there. Is that Thurston? Hadn't been long. Put some flowers up there. Mama's is the right aisle. Mm -hmm. Faye, okay. you got to go all the way Jean, around. Maurice. I remember coming down here. Okay, there's Holmes. Is that Eugene? Eugene, Mom. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Eugene and Daddy are very close. You see, um, I'm I think sure John's tickled. Turned off right up here. Okay. David took me. Yeah, he's back here. Yeah, he is. See the orange flower? Yes. On top, right That's there. Here. There's right there, Johnny. Look. That's Johnny. I got to get some Christmas in that here. Hi, John. So this is Lori's dad, John Vandiver, John Wesley. And he loved to deer hunt, so they have a deer on there. Right here, friends. He's got a little night. Oh, he does? Oh, yes, he does. He sure does. Yeah, he does. A little nightlight right there, Mama. And an owl. Mm -hmm. Hey, Daddy. His birthday was November 5th. Mm -hmm. So this one right here is uh, the guy, I believe, owned the farm, and his brother worked on the farm, and they had a fallen out, and his brother shot him right there. I think his brother's in jail right now. I, this is Lori's cousin. This is Lori's cousin that's our age. I went to school with, and uh, they've already got their grave plot, and they're a long ways from dying. So that's Mama. a no-no for me Mama. right there. And they even put flowers on it, and they're not dead. That's really weird. And there's another one with a cruise ship on it. One of them has passed, but that's weird right there. So friends, this is the grave of Thurston Letchworth, and he was quite a character. Um, Thurston was an expert in everything. And one day I had, uh, I was test driving a motorcycle that Luther Apperson, or I shouldn't say I was test driving, I was gonna buy a motorcycle from Apperson. And he's a local rich guy, lived here in LaGrange, owned the Ford dealership before Wynn Odom owned it. And I went to go uh, buy the motorcycle and Thurston, I mean, uh, Apperson wanted to drive the motorcycle first. And he went down and turned around and a lady was coming out of an alley and he didn't know it. And he hit her on the hood and flipped right over the hood on that motorcycle. And he had a big old diamond ring on one finger and it drove into the ground. And they thought that the diamond had gotten damaged or busted. So I went back out there, I felt so bad. I went back out there to see if I could find the diamond. Thurston happened to be driving by and wanted to uh, ask me what I was doing. I told him I was looking for a diamond. Well, who knew that Letchworth Thurston was a diamond expert? He started telling me about diamond cutting and help, trying to help me find the diamond. It turned out the diamond didn't get damaged and uh, it was actually a flap of skin from his finger had covered the diamond up and made it look like it was missing. But that is my Thurston Letchworth story right there, friends. That is a true story. That really happened right here in LaGrange, right over by the old city hall uh, in front of Apperson's uh, little warehouse that he kept stuff in. He kept that motorcycle and all kinds of stuff. Huh? Turn right. Turn right. So we're going to Uncle Bud's house. Uncle Bud <laughs> was the chief of police here in LA, LaGrange, North Carolina. They called him Chief Pelletier. <laughs> He told me the other day, he said, you know, I don't believe I'm going to get better. I said, yeah. I said, you got to push yourself. I said, you'll be all right. Okay, Mom, now. I Billy said, you got to eat. I don't know where we're going. Mom ain't going across. Slow down now. Slow down. I see Peltier Body Shop right here. Okay. Is this Not it? Not this one, the next one. 
This is that's a, where Johnny lived. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. So he still got a truck. So what he did is moved in the other house, and Johnny got that house. Uh -huh. So that was their house originally, Uncle Bud's. Okay. But Johnny and his. I wife remember that. I, I didn't realize that. I forgot. When I stayed with them, it was over there. It was not here.